Hello guys, in this video we are going to build this super cool robot arm. So the other day I was cleaning my room and I found this old motor I had laying around. I thought it would be pretty cool to use this rotary and linear motion to actuate the robot gripper. So what you need to get started is a microcontroller, a power supply, a driver for the stepper motor and a 3D printer. Let's get started. I'm not gonna lie, in the beginning I wanted to build an entire robot, but for now we're just going to make it really simple and only build the end effector and the gripping mechanism. So let's take some inspiration from industrial robots. You can see here that they're moving the mass of the motors as far back as possible. This is to reduce the torque and by this we can also reduce the size and the torque requirements for the motors at the base. So I've actually done the same for this. You can see I've moved the motor as far back as possible and then it's going to transmit the force from this motor through the rod that goes through the entire body of this which then will turn the grip up back and forth. So I actually animated everything, you can see it moves back and forth beautifully inside this software. Uh, if we hide the main body, you can see the rod and the adapter for uh, the nut. And so if I'm going to hide this as well, now that we know these two are connected, it should all make sense. So you can see when the motor spins around, the nut will actually move back and forth and the nut is connected to the rod, which will turn the gripper. So uh, my 3D printer over extrudes a tiny bit and I forgot to adjust it um, but I essentially got these blobs on the surface and I'm just going to sand them out with uh, some sandpaper. Alright, I think that looks good. It's always hard to get enough PLA, but this time I finally got it. All right, so I redesigned this and I added this different clamping system because I thought it was cool to make it square instead of round, but I made a big dum dum. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I designed this so that uh, this one can't go in the slot. It has like this uh, dovetail right here and uh, it was just supposed to slide in. But uh, I added this later on in CAD software and I totally forgot about this. So I think this is a great example of why we do some prototyping uh, to, to find problems like this fast. Alright, I think I'm going to redesign it and print a new one. So I haven't printed with supports for a long while and uh, I guess this is a moment of truth. Let's see if they come off. Oh, that was satisfying. Almost no marks left at all. I guess I would say this is the most important area because that's where the screw is going in. Uh, this is less important but actually this is way nicer. Uh, it's not too bad. Okay, now that we got everything 3D printed, I think it's time to do a little assembly. So I got all the hardware that we need right here, and then we'll do the electronics after this. So we got a bunch of these M3x10 screws, and then we got a few countersunk screws that we're also going to use for all of the joints for the gripper. I actually decided to use uh, countersunk screws because they can make it so that the design is a lot slimmer. In the beginning I used machine screws like this with the internal hexagonal pattern but uh, I switched to these to make it uh, more compact. I already assembled this and fine tuned all of the joints. You can uh, adjust the slop, or I guess you could call it preload, by tightening these. You can see it has a little bit of slop, but uh, when it's all assembled, it runs really smoothly. I'm actually quite surprised by how well this runs, but I think it's also due to the fact that I sanded them. 
so that we don't get bumps on the top surface of all of the links in this journey. Okay, so let's start with the end effector. We got these two plates. Actually, this is just for cosmetics, uh, but it will look pretty silly without it. You could get away with just pending this one. Okay guys, so I just realized that these screws are a little bit too long, but instead of spending a lot of time shortening these screws, I think it will be not much easier for me to just print any one of these. Although this takes about two hours to print, so I decided to make this little spacer instead. Alright, now we can see another demonstration of the mechanism. So obviously it's not going to be the plate moving up and down, it's going to be the rod. But uh, in order for us to connect the rod, we have to spin it down on the axle of the motor a little bit. So let's do that. Okay, so in CAD I made these slots to make it easier to mount this, but I think I could have made them a little bit longer because it's not super convenient to do this. But it works. Alright, that's all the hardware assembled. Now all we need to do is make the electronics. So I got this birdboard hooked up with uh, an Arduino Nano and then a A4988 stepper motor driver. I also hooked up two buttons so I can control the direction of the motor. Now all that's missing is a power supply for the driver and some leads to the stepper, which I got right here. I'm gonna plug in the two motor poles for the motor. This one actually has six wires, but I opened it up and I saw that it was a bipolar motor, which means we only need four wires to control it. So let's hook those up. And now for the power. Oh, all right. So it still doesn't work. Uh, let me have a look at what's going on here. <laughs> okay. Update. Obviously, I need to reconnect the power supply after I have worked on it. Oy. That works. Nice. I think we should put the robot arm to test. Alright. Okay, that works pretty well. Oi. <laughs> all right i know what you're all thinking uh what happens if i put my finger in here so let's see how much force this one actually can squeeze out <laughs> okay okay that's uh that's quite a bit let me see if i can find something uh, soft can it squish a tomato let's find out <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, so while it doesn't really destroy the tomato, I think uh, I can feel that this is uh, just about to explode. Okay, if you're interested in how much gripping force this thing has, I have put up a little test right here where we will try to grip this way we'll see how much uh, force it can output quite a bit you can see it grips with the uh, 1450 grams that's uh, quite a lot more than what i would have expected also i think we could potentially get even more out of this system if we turn up the amount of amperage 
for the motor because I really don't know what kind of motor this is. I've tried to Google it. I cannot find the the amp limit for this. So one other thing I really like about this robot gripper is that the gripping part of the mechanism works really well with picking up small objects. Let me demonstrate by picking up this piece of wire. You can see that just grips really well. Okay, so I just wanted to explain to you guys how many prototypes I actually made in order to get to the final one, so you can see how much work was actually involved in this project. The first one was kind of a rough proof of concept. It wasn't meant to work that well. It was just to demonstrate the working mechanism of the robot gripper. I thought that the um, top plates was pretty cool to begin with, but it wasn't super printer friendly. Uh, and I eventually decided to go with sample, uh, something a little more simple like this. I think this one is really, really cool and beautiful. But uh, again, the problem with this one is that it's not really that printer friendly. You have to print it upright like this, and it's not super strong at the layer lines. So I eventually went away from this, and then I made this design, which worked really well. And uh, it was a lot simpler because I moved from having these uh, pins to just having simple screws. Initially, I thought that these pins would be perfect because they would have way lower friction and it's kind of like a, a bushing fit. It is the correct way to do it in engineering, but since this is a, just a DIY project, I thought we would make it as simple as possible. This worked great and it had um, a round tube, but um, I did a little more design work and I actually changed the round tube to a square one simply because I think it looks cooler. Um, but this one does have some advantages though. Like for example, it's easy to rotate by hand if you ever wanted to do something like that. All right, now on to the last part. I designed these top plates quite a few times. I had some a few issues with these, but uh, in the end, I got there, and then we got to this design, which you can see here. Okay, so let's do a little uh, recap on this project. I think it turned out pretty great. Uh, if we were to build this again, I think I'd just buy a connector instead of soldering wires directly. And then also, uh, I think I would redesign the connections on the top plate, because there's supposed to go two screws through here, but this section is so thin that there's not really room for any screws. Maybe you could have like a latching mechanism or something that clicks on here instead. But other than that, I'm pretty satisfied with the design. Uh, I think it's pretty great uh, how well the hinge design worked out on the robot gripper. I was a little worried using uh, crude screws with threads as an axle, but uh, I think it worked out pretty great, especially uh, the fact that they are adjustable. In the beginning, I was a little scared that these would just come loose over time, but they seem to hold up quite well. So that's uh, a major plus. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. This is a new channel and uh, your support means a lot. Uh, so stay tuned for the upcoming projects.